No one must know my secret. Uh, oh, hello. You know, my very first Telarian wins was about Popper, but more specifically, it was about how Magic the Gathering as a whole is like a garden, and that like any garden, each individual plant needs tending and needs care in order to properly flourish. Well, this video isn't about Popper, but it is still about that garden of Magic the Gathering, the way Wizards of the Coast doesn't seem to ever want to invest into what it has, but is focused only on everything that it does not. I recently reviewed this, the Chinese Global Series decks. I covered the extreme amount of time, effort, and care that went into developing these cards and this product. Consultants were hired. Each card in here has brand new artwork, and all of that's a pretty penny by itself, and all because Wizards doesn't have a very strong presence in China and would like to make an investment in changing that, or at least hoping that they can change that. They want to have a presence. They want to have sales, and that's a good thing. Meanwhile, in the largest country in South America, the Magic the Gathering community, the Magic the Gathering marketplace there, is largely ignored. In fact, one might even argue Brazil is just one country in an entire continent that is already aware of Magic the Gathering, already playing Magic the Gathering, just ready and ripe to grow in Magic the Gathering, except, as I'm about to show, the company that makes Magic the Gathering seems indifferent or disinterested in that market. But having just returned from there, I feel the real global series Wizards of the Coast should be turning to is not China, but Brazil and South America. This is a part of the Magic the Gathering garden that needs to be cultivated and that is ripe to grow. Blah, 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 blah. A few weeks ago, I attended GP Sao Paulo in Brazil, which set the record, by the way, for the largest GP, not just in that country, but in the entire continent. What I saw at GP Sao Paulo was nothing short of amazing. The convention hall was packed from start to finish, unbelievably packed. Players from all over the continent had traveled to Sao Paulo and were playing in events from the main to casual commander and everything in between. There were a total of not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, but seven daily popper events, as well as fire on demand popper, and each of these events had a couple hundred players in them at all times. But this was also a 25th anniversary birthday event. So in addition to the usual GP offerings, Wizards of the Coast held an unlimited booster draft. Not a unlimited booster pack as in you get all the booster packs you want, as in we're drafting the booster packs of the unlimited, the pre-revised, you know what I mean. And this was diminished only by the fact that they forgot to ask open boosters for a pair of his blue gloves. With this pestilence, with their both incredibly high toughness creatures. Wow, here's our first big uh, collection card there in uh, Volcanic Island. Uh, Volcanic Island, one of the premium uh, dual lands, the original dual lands. It's just an island and a mountain all in one go. Comes into play untapped, no cost in terms of life, no cost in terms of anything else. Someone will be very happy to be snapping that one up. While I was there, I learned a lot about the Brazilian Magic the Gathering community, but I also learned a lot about the way Wizards of the Coast treats the Brazilian player base and marketplace, behavior that travelers from other parts of South America told me is consistent throughout the rest of the continent. To describe the corporate attitude towards Brazil and South America as an underinvestment would be generous. In fact, one recurring phrase and feeling that I was told by the player base, by player after player that I met, is that Wizards of the Coast just doesn't care about any Portuguese or Spanish-speaking market. And while I know that's not true, that was how they were feeling, and I can't help but see why Magic players in Brazil and South America felt that way. After all, GP Sao Paulo was literally one of only two GPs held in the entire continent of South America. Let that sink in. Compared to the United States, where in 2018, 27 Grand Prix are to be held, and the USA, by the way, is just one country, for all of South America, which consists of 12, count them, 12 countries, there are only 
two GPs that are going to be held in 2018, two for an entire continent. Brazil itself has the largest population of all South America, 207 million people. Not quite as big as the United States, but nothing to sneeze at. And magic is big in Brazil, despite numerous problems, numerous shortcomings, and numerous obstacles from Wizards of the Coast. And I'm going to get to those in just a minute. And yet, Magic the Gathering is still thriving in Brazil. And that's due in no small part to the Magic the Gathering content creator community, which is huge in Brazil, overwhelmingly so, as it is home to an amazing number of Magic the Gathering YouTubers, podcasters, cosplayers, and card altruists. I even got to meet the big fish himself, Andre of Umotivo, the number one Brazilian Magic the Gathering channel. Andre does deck techs, a lot of popper videos, openings, and more. I even got to sit down and be interviewed by him, and I will link to that video in the description of this video for you to go check out, and I hope that you will. Yeah, and and we, we do understand that this takes time. Of course. We don't want like next month all the formats, all the cards. No, we understand that it takes time to, to do this, but yes. we really want this. As a content creator, I think it is pretty important that I can do gameplays of yes. any format in my channel, not needing to use like Magic Online that is pretty ugly and not streamable friendly. Yet. Yes, uh, no, I mean, and, and if... But there were so many more creators. Brazil was teeming with them from other YouTubers. My name is Guma. I am from Guma Noob. And uh, yeah, that's right, I'm Noob. My channel is about Popper and Legacy. And maybe sometimes I love Jace and a lot of coffee. Oh. Ele vive em Floripa e odeia editar. Guma Noob, logo quadrado. Mas ele adora o café e o Jace. Guma Noob, logo quadrado. Gosta de fazer gameplay de Popper e Legacy. Guma Noob, logo quadrado. Por favor, Bob Esponja, não me processe. Guma Noob, logo quadrado. Uh, do you swear on your channel, right? Uh, no, yeah. No? Yes, yeah, you do. Yeah, yes, you, you do. do. Okay, good. No problem. No, no, man. You, you can't swear. <laughs> To talented artists who alter cards. Hi, internet. My name is Tati Wakalaka. I do alter cards here in Brazil. Uh, I do also custom tokens when I go to events. And I don't know, it's nice to meet you all. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, add me at team. I do, I do Twitch lives every Tuesday. So, yeah. Cosplay was everywhere at the GP. My name is Sarah Angel and I'm here in the GP Sao Paulo. I have a YouTube channel which called is Canal Angel Sarah. Hi guys, welcome to the Sarah Angel show. Come down. This video is not entirely in English, okay? It's just the start because I would like to say thanks for the artists uh, who don't speak in Portuguese and I'm speaking English. Well, uh, Thank you, thank you for all the things. Thank for the experience, thank for the gifts, thank for the jokes, thanks for the conversation, thanks for all the things. To, of course, podcasters. So we are a Brazilian podcast in Portuguese and we are called Hux Discast because we are BR. <laughs> oh, that makes sense, right? We are on that for three years now and we talk about everything uh, from prices, from uh, tournament results, from interviews, we, we had Willy Edel, we had PV, Thiago Saporito, Marcio Carvalho, and we want to build a, a better community. So and so many more. Someone said to me in Brazil, Magic the Gathering is not about Wizards of the Coast. They forget us down here. So in Brazil, Magic the Gathering is about the players. We play without the company helping us. We play because of friendship and family. And indeed, I began to learn why, a little bit of why, it can't be about Wizards of the Coast's support and cultivation in Brazil and South America. The podcasters, Rakdos Cast, for example, I heard about how they were just one of numerous Portuguese language podcasters, all of whom prepared media kits, which they sent into Wizards, going over their numbers, their viewers, which are quite huge. Rakdos Cast, in particular, is pretty darn popular. And they 
they were completely ignored, not even an email response. These are people making free ads for magic product, spreading and growing people's interest in magic in this ripe market, all for free, and the company that makes the game can't even be bothered to give an email reply. Andre has surpassed 40,000 subscribers. He's the biggest MTG YouTuber, not just in Brazil, but in South and Latin America. And even so, he gets next to no support from Wizards of the Coast. It's almost as if they don't want their non-English market to grow. Great example is last year at GP Sao Paulo, they had a content creators corner featuring all of these creators I've mentioned and more. It had an insane amount of interaction. It was a huge and popular success, something everybody was talking about afterwards. And the result of this great success by the content creators, zero support or even thanks from Wizards of the Coast to the point of not even bothering to add any content creators to this year's spell slinging at GP Sao Paulo. But it's not just Brazilian content creators that are being ignored. On the player end, I heard so many stories. For example, people after people told me that there is literally no one at Wizards of Coast that they can find who can fix issues that they have with things like their WotC player accounts. And stores went on and on about numerous WPN issues. And not just like, oh, the system's messing up again, but rather having no one to connect with, no one that they can contact. So much so that both players Players and store owners were telling me what they do to resolve these issues is just wait until the one GP they get a year to find a Portuguese speaking judge who could maybe try and log on to the system, log on to the site, and attempt to resolve some of the lower end errors that they're having. Furthermore, translation of cards and articles into Portuguese seems to be a low priority, often riddled with errors and most of the time not even happening at all. I learned that in Brazil it is impossible to get a booster box sealed with Wizards of the Coast shrink wrap. That's because Customs there insists on opening all boxes in order to stamp each individual booster pack, and then they reseal the booster box in plain, basic shrink wrap. As you can imagine, this causes major problems and concerns among the player base about the authenticity of magic booster boxes in Brazil, people feeling like they have no way to know that they're getting a, a sealed one. And while that is not a Wizards of the Coast act, that's a customs issue, shipping times and turnaround are completely ignored, so much so that Wizards of the Coast just will not allow for the longer time in customs that it takes for products to go through, so that, well, for example, when I was at GP Sao Paulo, Battle Bond still hadn't arrived to the country, even though it had been released over a month ago, and I heard so many stories about pre-release after pre-release being jam-packed full of players who then are told, sorry, the product never arrived we can't have pre-release. This is a common occurrence, and all it would take is some effort from the company to say, oh, we need to start shipping out products sooner. We need to have some kind of a system in place to be sure that it's going to get there on time. Yeah, it stinks that you're dealing with a tough customs system, but maybe start trying to work with them, talk to them about what's going on, something. You know, I've never been able to get streaming working for me as a content creator. It's a smart thing for me to keep trying, as Twitch is a huge marketplace for us creators, and if I could ever figure out how to do it right, how to establish myself as a streamer, in addition to being a YouTuber, it could mean a greater success for me as a content creator. So yes, I do turn my attention, and I do expend efforts towards this area that I am not established in, but one day would like to to be. But to ignore my YouTube channel as I keep trying to become a successful streamer would be a huge mistake. Maybe I am just not cut out for that type of content creation. Maybe it just won't take off. I can't just say, yeah, whatever, the videos on my YouTube channel will get views, or maybe they won't, but what I really want is Twitch. What I really, really want to do is be on Twitch and then ignore YouTube entirely. Why? That would be a huge mistake for me as a creator, and it is akin to what Wizards is doing not only in Brazil, ignoring what they have to focus on what they don't have, but in other areas as well. 
Magic Online is a great example of this. This is a huge moneymaker for Wizards of the Coast, and yet how much effort do they put into making this a better player experience? It is left to linger and stagnate as extreme amounts of money and energy are put into new digital products like Arena to create a fantastic player experience. I hope Arena does well, but what about all those people playing Magic Online? They too are ignored. And on and on. Now, you've heard my many rants about the Popper format and getting Popper support. I'll spare you that one. But why is Popper ignored when a new and underplayed format like Brawl is given an insane amount of attention, despite all the numbers indicating customer interest is the opposite? I think it's because Wizards of the Coast just is obsessed with what they don't have and oftentimes indifferent to what they do have. But I believe, I would argue, for greater success, for greater community, for greater profits, and for a greater game to invest in Brazil. Not just Brazil, but places like Brazil, all of South America, places where we are already playing Magic the Gathering but want to play more, even in the United States where where we have those huge number of GPs, where are the areas that do not often see a GP within a day's drive. Maybe we should make efforts to hold GPs there as well. We need to invest in that which we already have, as well as look towards those new markets and those new products. And I feel more than anything, Brazil is one of the biggest examples of a part of the Magic Gathering Garden that needs some watering. What thinks you, you think that uh, Wizards of the Coast could do to help the creators, to support the creators that they don't do yet. Have you don't have to. Yes. To, to have say, you have you ever been? You, you, have you? Do you get preview cards? You get preview cards, right? Uh, once a year, maybe. That's it. Just once, not once per set. No. Okay. No. One thing they could do is they could make sure they give you a preview card once per set. Every set, when they give you as a creator a preview card, you as a creator are making a free ad for them. Yeah. You are making an advertisement for them <laughs> and, and it is for free and it is reaching people. People who watch your channel are not watching them stream on Twitch yeah. when, when the people who make the game are, 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 are giving away preview cards and such. Yeah. And this video is brought to you by my and many other people's local game store Card Kingdom, a brick and mortar pillar of this community, as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. These are the people that keep Talarian Community College going and growing strong. So thank you. 